Everybody, it's Pun, the Frugal Streamer, and I have a new video for you. This one is going to talk about NDI and how you can use it to capture your gameplay audio and video and send it over to your streaming PC instead of using a capture card. Now, this is using NDI 4.0. This is the latest version of NDI, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can use this, and I think you'll like it. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so where do we start? Well, first of all, you need to go to NDI.tv, and this is the website for NDI. Now, if you don't know about NDI, NDI is Network Device Interface. It is a video protocol that allows you to send video and audio sources over your network at low latency, near latency free. So it's a great resource. It's free, which is really good. And you can use this with OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS, or if you use XSplit, use it with XSplit. So what you need to do, okay, is first of all, go to NDI Tools. This is going to give you a number of little apps that you can download. For Windows, you get Studio Monitor, Scan Converter. Here's the list here. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, but we're going to mainly focus on Scan Converter. That's what we're going to use to capture our video on our game PC. Uh, you will note, too, and I have used this, um, is NDI for Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, this will provide a video and, and audio patch to any person that can receive NDI and they can look at what you're doing in real time on say Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, uh, any of the Adobe apps that you can uh, design around, which is really nice. Okay, this is also a big commercial uh, uh, protocol that is used for commercial cameras, uh, for broadcast, that sort of thing, but it's great that we can use this with OBS Studio. So anyway, NDI tools, you download, hit the download key. There's going to be some, you know, you're going to fill some information out. And when you hit the download, uh, it's going to give you the package with everything here, including the run times. Okay. So you don't need to run, install run times. Uh, if you're looking on OBS Studios forums for this NDI plugin, um, this is gives you the run times that you need for the OBS Studio NDI plugin too. So, okay, that's good to know. All right, so once you get that installed, okay, which is simple to do, it's a simple executable, you're going to get a number of files here. And let's go down to uh, New Tech here, or NDI 4 tools right here. You can see the NDI 4 runtime. Okay, this is, uh, it installs with it. So here's all the different things that you get. Uh, virtual input test patterns. We're going to look at scan converter. Now, scan converter runs in the background. I would recommend you make and pin this to your taskbar like I have done down here, okay? But anyway, when you're running that, it's just going to run in the background. You'll see it right here in the bottom right corner just to verify that it's running. But how you control this is just by right clicking and you get all of your different settings here. So you have frame rate and you can use your monitor for, uh, frame rate. You can use uh, 60, you know, 59.94. Anyway, you should choose all the different ones here you got that you can, that you want to stream your video source to. Audio source, um, it's going to default to silence. Uh, so you're going to need to go in and change this to whatever you want. I'm using system audio, which is going to be your default playback device in Windows. Okay. And that is typically where all your gameplay audio is going to go into. You can also go and send your webcam. If you have a webcam on your game PC, um, I do not personally. I have mine on my streaming PC. But if you have a webcam on a game PC, you can select that video source in this list here. Likewise, you have a webcam audio source. Now, a bunch of people use their microphone. If you have a, a nice microphone or something you want to send to Streamlabs OBS instead of putting the microphone on Streamlabs OBS, so you can do that through this, which is really nice. Okay, I personally, I don't do it. You know, I use another method. All right, now a new thing with NDI Scan Converter 4 is the ability to do KVM control. Now, I do not know, I mean, I don't have this, I don't use it, um, but it is there for somebody that, uh, you know, knows a little more about it. Personally, I don't. I, I It's new, I haven't really researched it, um, but if I find out more about it and there's some neat ways that you can use it, I will let you know on the stream or on the video. But yeah, so the main way, main things you're going to do this, okay, is uh, by default, okay, this captures whatever is on your main display, okay? 
You could also ROI. Okay, so to configure ROI, it just gives you a little window. And if I move this around, you can see I have a window that's actually on my main display um, that is now capturing a window. And I can resize this. I can, you know, make it full screen if I want to. Uh, you know, and it does it real time. You can kind of see the, you can see the outlines of the window as I'm moving it. Um, but yeah, so it's a really neat little function. And so for little windowed programs or something like that, you just want to capture an area on your display, you can do that. Um, but normally most people would just use the default, which is your full display. All right. So likewise, you can also um, capture your mouse cursor. Okay. Which is what I'm doing here. And so, yeah, scan converter is pretty simple. Um, it's l pretty easy on your CPU. Um, it is no more than running OBS Studio by default. This will use your GPU for uh, rendering. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, it is a, uh, it does use a little bit of your GPU resources. Um, this is going to use uh, about 100 maybe 120 meg of your uh, network. So that is something to keep in mind. Let's find NDI, there it is. Uh, so right now it's using about 2.6, 2.7% of my GPU. Um, it, it just depends, it just, you know, it does cycle, but you can see it's not using a lot. Uh, so yeah, uh, when you're running 3D games, of course it's going to increase the load a little bit, but um, it, it does not, hardly affect your frame rate at all if if any to be honest with you because most of the load is through the gpu which is great all right so the second way of capturing your gameplay and sending it to your streaming pc is by the use of obs studio so go, if you want to do this um you need to go to obsproject.com you'll come to the main page here and install the latest version of obs studio which is 24.0.1 Click on the Windows version. It's also applicable to Mac OS. Okay, and uh, I don't know if there's a Linux version of the NDI plugin yet, but I do know that there is Mac and Windows. All right, and I use Windows. So if you're like me, click on the Windows version. Note here that uh, I don't think NDI supports Windows 7. I think you have to have Windows 8 and up, but um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so download OBS, install it. Okay, then when you get done with that, come back to the website, go to the forums, and what you'll need to do is go to plugins and OBS Studio plugins, and you're going to find the OBS NDI integration and OBS Studio plugin. Okay, go to this forum thread, and right here is the magic button. Click on download, that's going to send you to the GitHub. Okay, so if you did not install NDI tools, okay, and you're just starting out with this method, you're going to need to go and install the NDI 4.0 runtimes. Install this, follow all of the instructions, okay, it's going to probably ask you to restart your PC. Do that, please, okay, before you install the plugin. Once you install the runtimes, then install this NDI 4.7 Windows installer, okay. So you can download both of these and then, you know, install the runtimes, then install this uh, plugin. Okay, when you install this plugin, it's going to look like it's installing OBS Studio again. Okay, don't worry about it. It will not erase all of your settings or anything that you've already established. Um, it's just installing the plugin. All right. So, again, follow all the instructions that it tells you. Okay, if it asks you to restart your PC, restart your PC. So when you get that done, then you will have OBS Studio installed. You can then click on OBS Studio. Okay, now, sorry for the tunnel vision. Here, let me do this so it's not quite so bad. All right, so here you're going to go to Tools, and you should see NDI Output Settings. If you do not, that means it did not install correctly. It means you probably didn't restart your computer or you didn't install the run times, okay? But if you did it correctly, you will get these output settings and you can send outputs. Um, so you can do the main output. Main output would be your settings under video here where you set your canvas resolution, your frame rate, all that stuff. 
or you can do the preview output, which is your actually what you're seeing on your preview right here where my mouse cursor is. All right. So I just normally do main. All right. And once you get that set, now it's sending video over to your string PC. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here. Uh, under settings, all right, again, sorry for the tunnel vision. Once you have that set, you notice some of these uh, different settings under recording all the stuff are grayed out. You cannot change these while that plugin that plugin's running, okay? So if you need to change something, you got to go here and turn it off, all right? So just keep that in mind. All right, so now you can minimize OBS because it's – capturing your videos, uh, your main output or your preview output, whatever you've selected, and sending it over your network to whatever it can, whatever it will capture. All right, so now let's switch over to my Stream PC. Hello. All right, so we're going to use Streamlabs OBS for this because Streamlabs OBS is nice. They, when you install the base software, it already has NDI uh, built into it, so as a source. All right, so for here you can go to your source list and here you will have NDI source. Again, if you do not have the runtimes installed on your streaming PC, you will not get the NDI source listed on your source list, which means that you need to install the runtimes or install it again because you didn't do it correctly. All right, so if you see the NDI source, everything's there. All right, All right so you click that source, hit add source, and I've already got NDI source built here, so I'm going to to cancel that instead but um, if you don't have it you know you would add a new source and then you would get this window here all right and this is what you would see all right so here i have uh different ndi sources i could choose i've got my desktop here right now um for some reason it's not showing this let me make sure i turned it on main output should be there on the game pc seeing something that says OBS and I'm not. Why am I not seeing OBS? There it is. I'm sorry. It took it sometimes NDI is a little weird. It takes a little bit for it to show up. Um and sometimes when you when you select the source like this, it might take a few minutes for it to update on your uh stream PC. But there it is. It is working. Um I've got it. Um this is my game PC. So yeah. Uh so that's another way that you can do that using OBS Studio. Now, great thing, let me bring you back to the game PC and I'll show you some other options with NDI with OBS Studio that you get that you would not get with the scan converter. Uh, say I want to go here and select this. Uh, this is an audio source. So I should be able to go to filters here. And uh, you have audio filters now. Here you have a dedicated NDI output for this audio. So say I wanted to send this audio source, which is my comms, okay, my Discord, over to my stream PC as this dedicated audio source. Well, you can select this filter, and then it will uh, then, you know, send this over to as an audio filter straight over to it, just feeds it straight on NDI, and then I should be able to see this. Switch over to the stream PC. As a source... Actually, let me select. Well, yeah, let me do another NDI source. I'll just call this, uh, let's make a new one, and it'll just, I'll just leave this name as NDI source one in parentheses here. And I should see, yes, yeah, so here is, this is the video source that says OBS. This dedicated NDI output is the actual audio source. Okay, so it's not going to show up as video, um, but what it'll do is you can pull it down here to the bottom. What it this now allows is it gives you another audio channel right here. So if I were to have comps or something like that, it would send it and then it would show up as an audio source. So you can kind of use this as a way to say build you a dual PC live stream without with a bunch of audio sources and everything from your game PC um, to your stream PC. Uh, it takes a lot of bandwidth to do but it is an option. All right. So now I'm going to be honest with you personally, I'm right now just using scan converter uh, instead of using the OBS studio. And the reason for that is, is that scan converter uses less GPU resources. Right now there's an issue with um, GPU allocation and rendering your preview with OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Uh, so 
if you're using a like a 1440p display or a 4k display that you're downscaling and you're using a lot of gpu resources in a game um, you could have issues with drop frames um, or skipping frames a choppy look that sort of thing so that's something to keep in mind um, and that's kind of why i'm using scan converter right now is because you don't really have that issue because you don't have a display that needs to be rendered, okay? The scan converter is running in the background. You don't really see anything. Uh, so that's why I kind of favor scan converter right now until they get this issue working with uh, between Windows 10 and OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. And I don't know really who to blame here. I, I may imagine it's more of a Windows 10 thing. Uh, but if you're doing that, if you decide to use OBS Studio and you're using the... Uh, latest update of windows 10 the 1903 update um, use the game mode because that now works properly and it does allocate uh, resources and it's still and it works really good for 1080p but there's still issues with 1440p and 4k from what i've heard and i've noticed it myself so that's why i use scan converter now over obs studio but if you're using 1080p and you have a uh, game mode activated for the most part i don't think you should have any issues but that's just something to keep in mind i'm just kind of telling you why i prefer scan converter right now so anyway all right so that's it guys uh whatever method you choose whether it's scan converter or using obs studio to capture your gameplay and using the ndi built into it uh either way works uh just keep in mind that gpu allocation issue that i talked about uh, because that will kind of determine, especially for you uh, 1440p uh, display users and 4K, uh, that may determine whether you use a scan converter. Um, so anyway, if I get any updates on that and there's anything that uh, comes about with GPU allocation, I'll let you know. But uh, anyway, NDI is great. It's a way to uh, save money if you can't afford a capture card. Does it really take place of a capture card? Well, I would probably say no. Um, if you really want the best video, I do recommend a capture card. I think that will give you the best output. But there's a lot of people can't afford a capture card, especially the newer ones that have the 4K throughput and all that. Um, you know, $250 is a lot of money to be asking for a new streamer. You know, and I personally use NDI myself because it's affordable. And that's what this stream is all about, is making things affordable and figuring out ways to get around spending so much money. So, you know, if I'm using NDI, my stream looks great. I think most people should probably use NDI if they can support it on their network. You know, and that's another consideration is network. Uh, do you have a gigabyte network? If you do, then more than likely NDI will work great. Um, if you have an older router, it probably will not work for you. And... That's why NDI is free. You know, NDI is free. You can download it. You can try it. If it doesn't work, then at least you know, hey, yes, I definitely need to get a capture card. If it does work for you, then, hey, I just saved me some money. All right, so there you go. All right, guys, so thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. Make sure you check out my social media, at frugal underscore streamer on Twitter or on the gaming side, at TFS underscore pun. If you want to support me through Patreon like these fine people have, then make sure you check me out at patreon.com forward slash the frugal streamer. I have different tiers that have different perks. So make sure you check those out, including the top tier, which gets you a full stream package that I commissioned myself. So there you go. If you're interested, check out my Patreon. Other than that, thank you for support, guys. I do appreciate it as I'm really close to that 10,000 subscriber mark on youtube and we will be doing some giveaways all right so thank you guys appreciate it oh yeah i forgot sorry make sure you hit the like subscribe please the likes really help me out a lot it gets the videos exposed on youtube and more people get to see it have a great rest of your week be safe out there this is fun frugal streamer have a great day